A very famous French mathematician named Claude Berge in 1961 conjectured that the two elementary conditions that we have just talked about characterize perfect graphs entirely. A graph, he conjectured that a graph is perfect if and only if neither the graph nor its complement contains an odd cycle. That the two obstructions that we have just evidenced are the only things that bar a graph from being a perfect graph. Bears was a fascinating guy. He was um, one of the first internationally distinguished figures in graph theory and, and worked in other areas as well. He was the first head of the French organization called the CNRS. Uh, I'll try to say it in French, Centre National Scientific Research or something like that. I butchered it, I'm sure. That's um, sort of like a mixture of our National Science Foundation together with uh, our, our uh, national labs. So he was a, both a mathematician, a politician, a, a very important scientific figure. When he made this conjecture, a number of people thought, this will not uh, be all that hard. And then as time went by, people began to think, you know, this is turning out to be pretty hard. So all the big shots of the day took a stab at it. And in the late 60s and 70s, and there were, and, and into the 80s for that matter, there were entire conferences built around this theme. Let's get a bunch of smart people together and we will settle Bears' perfect graph conjecture. But they weren't able to do it. Uh, now, a person whose name has come up before, Laszlo Lovas, did part of this. That thing just moved. <laughs> um, did, did you see it? It moved. I, I went. Mach, machines are after me, you know. So. <laughs> All right. So Laszlo Lovas proved something. This, this might sound little or it might sound big. This depends on. I, proved the graph is perfect if and only if its complement is perfect. Uh, now, this, this proof is beautiful. You could understand it. It would take you a day, um, not a whole day. It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's digestible, but it'll take you a whole day. It might, it might take you more than a whole day. So you can read this proof and and at the end of the day, you'll say, okay, I understand. I, don't, I have no idea how he got it, because it's a very, very elegant and beautiful proof. Lovas was a special person. Uh, he's just a, a little bit younger than, than I. Uh, much, much, much more distinguished. Won uh, a bazillion prizes, including the 2010 Kyoto Prize. Uh, I looked it up on the web this morning. 50 million yen is the cash prize which is, at the time, was around $550,000. Uh, he's also won the Wolf Prize, the Fulkerson Prize, more than once, the Polio Prize, the Goodell Prize, and, and other big prizes. Uh, he was part of the wave of Hungarians who came to the US in the final days uh, of the uh, Iron Curtain. Uh, if you remember, your world politics of the time, uh, certain countries in Eastern Europe had currency exchange rules. So if a Western tourist went to Hungary, you were obligated to convert your US dollars into forints and, and to pay the official government rate for it. Now on the street, you could get a rate that would be three times, not 3%, not 13%, but three times better. But of course, if you did that, then you risk being arrested because the agents were uh, checking all the time. 
So a number of distinguished Hungarians, uh, Lhotse Babai, Lovas, Semeredi, uh, many others, would take visiting positions at American universities and earn US salaries and then take the money back to Hungary where it was like a tremendous fortune. Now all of that's changed dramatically since the, uh, the wall came down. But uh, Lovas uh, stayed in the States and he was at Yale University for a while and he could have been anywhere. But then he, interestingly, he, he worked for like six years at Microsoft Research. And he was the big star when he was there. And they would have loved to keep him. But at some point, uh, Lovas said, well, I, my heart is in Budapest. And he went back. And currently, he serves as the president of the Hungarian uh, National Academy. So a very, very distinguished guy. And then in 2006, the bearish conjecture was finally resolved. And it was resolved by four mathematicians, Maria Chernovsky, Neil Robertson, Paul Seymour, and Robin Thomas. I, I hunted around and found these pictures on the web. The pictures are, uh, have some age to them. Uh, I, uh, this paper you will not read in your lifetime. Uh, I will not read it in my lifetime. It's 178 pages in a journal. And in one of the most distinguished journals in the world, the Annals of Mathematics, I, I've never heard of a 178 page journal article. This is the only one. And this is very unusual because it's a common torx journal, I mean, common torx theorem appearing in a journal which typically does not cater to this kind of work. Uh, they won the Fulkerson Prize for this in a cash award of 10,000. Okay, now it's not 500,000, but it's, uh, uh, this, this was a lot harder. Now, uh, Lovas did not win the 500,000 for the, for the little perfect graph theorem. He won it for a whole body of work. Uh, the second guy, Neil Robertson, is almost 10 years older than I am. The third person is Paul Seymour, and he's about five years younger than I. So there's a 15-year gap between Robertson and Seymour, 10 to 15. The person on the right is Robin Thomas, who is a Regents professor here at Georgia Tech in the School of Math. Very, very uh, distinguished and powerful guy, really nice man too. His wife uh, is Sigrun Andradotter, who is on the faculty of ISYE here. And many of you will know her. Robin is, uh, has just turned 50. And on the very left is Maria Chudnovsky. And I won't tell you her age. Uh, I'm not supposed to do that. But let me just say that that picture is pretty current. So she's... Uh, a generation younger. So these four have become close collaborators and have worked together. And you can just see the sweep of history in them. Now, Robertson is he's getting really, really old. And, uh, and you know, there's a, it's, it's like flat earth. Anybody older than I am is really, really old. And he's, so he's, he is ancient. Uh, Seymour is still at the peak of his powers, and Robin is going strong, and Maria is a young, br younger, brilliant, just truly brilliant uh, a mathematician. So it is, uh, it's been fun for me to watch the sweep of history because I, I go all the way back to the Bears conjecture. It's not one that I worked on, but this is a, a giant result. All right, so I, I simply want you to know about this history and to sort of connect with, with these people. Uh, Robertson is at Ohio State. Seymour is at Princeton. Again, Robin is here. 
And uh, Maria was at Columbia, and she is now at Princeton. So uh, Princeton stole her away from Columbia University. And, and, and with Seymour and, and Chudnovsky together at Princeton, uh, fantastic things are going to happen there. <laughs>